Hello everyone, welcome to another video of mine. This is technical drawing for today and we'll be going through the topic traditional drafting techniques. These are 10 multiple choice questions that I'll be going through with you to prepare you for any exams or tests that you may have upcoming, okay? So we'll go through these questions and I want you to try and answer them before I do, okay? And this will actually help you in um, analyzing questions and knowing the wrong questions from the right questions okay so let's go the first question says a half moon protractor is divided into how many degrees? A half moon protractor, if you know what a protractor is, it's either a circular tool or semicircular tool and it measures degrees. And a degree, if you don't know, is a unit of measurement of angles and it is different increments that add up to 360 degrees, okay? so each increment is one of 360 degrees okay so if you set an angle of or if you wanted to draw an angle of 60 degrees you will um, take a portion of a circle okay because the circle is a full 360 degrees so what you want if you want a 60 degree angle you will go from zero and you will count 60 strokes well you don't have to count them all but you will go to the map that says 60 okay uh, i will show you now the different types of protractors and a protractor is a tool that helps you measure angles as i said in degrees and you have your half moon protractor which is a semicircle and you have your full moon protractor the half moon protractor measures 180 degrees and that is half of 360 which is the full moon protractor so the full moon starts from zero and it goes here you have zero right here and it goes around and you can go either clockwise this way or you can go anti-clockwise this way okay so you have two options of um looking at for your angles the half moon protractor starts at zero here that's at zero here you can go this way which is clockwise and you can go the other way which is anti-clockwise okay so to answer the question a half moon protractor is divided into how many degrees and if you count the last number you will see that it is 180 degrees okay all right question number two a line drawn with a long section short dash and another long section is a a hidden feature, center of a circle, center axis of a cylinder, or the center of a radius. And the answer, if you look at this line chart, what they are asking for is a line that has a long section, a short dash, and another long section. And if you look at all of these, you will see this one, which is the center line or axis line it has long and small dashes which is what we are looking for so you have long short long short as you go along okay and this is used to show the center line or the center axis of um, a line or an object and the only option up here is this one which says center axis of a hidden cylinder so what i'm going to show you is an example of a cylinder that shows the center axis okay so here you have it this is a cylinder it shows you where the center of the circle or the two circles are joined together using the axis so the axis runs through the middle of the cylinder okay so to answer your question um, long dash short dash another long section is called a center axis right question number three Traditional drafters need to be able to create several different line widths. Why do you need several different line widths or line thicknesses? Um, is it because the different line widths come with different information? Is it because it has to do with how dark um, the finished drawing appears? Um, is it because they transmit better or they print better in a fax machine? 
or printer or does it not even make any difference okay so you need to create several line widths and this is a chart with different thicknesses of lines and you have different pencils that you can use to get the different thicknesses uh, you have H pencils and you have B pencils and you have different um, variations of thicknesses and this um, variation <coughs> helps you to look at the drawing or read the drawing and here you have a drawing with different line widths over here uh, you can read the drawing and you know what the objects are using the different line widths okay so let's say you have a you have the stove right here you have the counter right here the counter line would be a different thickness to the wall line okay so the wall would be a little bit thicker than the counter and that way you can differentiate where the wall begins and where the counter ends and this is the same for any other object you have the door right here um, you have the toilet you have um, the tables chairs cupboards um, sofa all that kind of stuff you need different line width line thicknesses so that you can know um, how to read the drawing okay because the drawing would convey different information all right so the answer would be um, as I said different information several of the tools used in traditional drafting this is number four include the following the parallel straight edge 45 degree triangle circle template or all of the above here you have all three tools uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with these tools and yes we need all of these three tools um, if we are going to do traditional drafting okay so that would be the answer you have your parallel straight edge to draw your horizontal you have the 45 degree um, triangle to our set square as we know it um, to draw your um, angles and you have the circle templates if you want to draw any circles on the drawing okay so um, several of the tools using traditional um, drafting would include all of the above all right a civil engineer number five working on a bridge design would probably rely on his dash scale and a scale is a ruler for checking printed drawings um a civil engineer is someone who works on like bridges roads um large projects per se okay so here is a engineer's scale a metric scale and an architect scale so the engineer scale would have a larger um, square footage or mileage or whatever unit you want to um, call compared to the metric and the architects okay so the engineers who do larger projects would probably use the, the civil engineer would probably use the engineer scale because it has a larger ratio compared to the metric and the architect scale okay so here's your answer all right so the next one is in order to convert fractional inches and i want you to look at the units fractional inches into decimal inches okay so here you have fractions and here you have a decimal in order to convert both um should you look on a metric conversion chart and remember metric has to do with meters millimeters centimeters above here we mentioned nothing about um, millimeters or meters all we mentioned is um, fractional to um, decimal inches uh, do you divide the top number by the bottom number to get the decimal and that would be the correct an answer do you check the engineer scale you would not check it in order to convert something okay all right so what you have to do if you have a fractional inch which is let's say for example three quarters this is an example you would have to um, divide go into your calculator and divide three divided by four and that would give you the decimal answer okay in inches okay all right um, it cannot be all of the above it can only be one so 
what you will be doing is dividing the top number of the fraction over the bottom number okay uh, also this is an example over here of um, various uh, fraction to decimal conversions they've done the calculation for you so if we look at three quarter which is this one you can see it's equal to 0 0.75 so some people just use the um, the conversion chart to um to convert inches okay all right so there you have your your answer you do some um, division and you would convert your fractions to decimals okay all right seven an engineer scale would be used to measure lines on a drawing where the scale factor reads and like i said before um, you need a larger scale for an engineer okay so the engineer scale uh, would measure larger um, areas so if you look at the ratios you can see um, the main one is one foot one foot one foot and a hundred feet okay so do you want to measure one foot increments for a bridge i don't think so you want to measure probably 100 feet okay because that's what engineers would mostly be working on um so they would use an engineer scale um for most um larger projects all right so this is an example of an engineer scale and the ratios goes from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, up to 100, 1,000, or even 10,000, depending on the size of the project, okay? So an engineer can measure um, smaller projects, as you can see, up to 10 feet, or very, very large projects, up to 10,000 feet, right? Um, the difference between the two is the architect scale only measures up to, by the, um, the feet, Okay, so if you have 12 inches in a feet, it would measure the 12 inches and go feet by feet by feet. Okay, and then you have to bring it down as small as possible. But the um, the engineer scale, um, you can measure by per 100 feet or per 1,000 feet. Okay, all right, so you have your answer there. Um, referring to fractional inches, Referring to the fractional inches to decimal inches to millimeter conversion chart, and I have the conversion chart right here. So what they are asking for is fractional inches to decimal inches to millimeters, okay, conversion chart. They have fractional, which is here, to decimal, which is here, to millimeters, which is right here. Okay, so what they're asking for is 3 sixteenths of an inch to millimeter conversion. So what you have to do is look for 3 sixteenths of an inch on the conversion chart and then you go over into um, the millimeter portion and that way you would know um, how many millimeters is 3 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, got that? All right, so once you look at the chart, you should be able to answer that question. All right, number nine, two more. Some traditional board drafters prefer the drafting machine over the parallel straight edge because it could be used without the need for, and if you look at board drawings, you have the drafting machine, which is right here, and you have the parallel straight edge. Uh, which one do you think would be uh, more adjustable, okay? the drafting machine because the drafting machine you can draw straight lines which the parallel straight edge can also you can draw vertical lines it cannot do that okay you will need a set square you can also draw angles or triangles swiveling um this um pad right here you can swivel it to draw angles or diagonal lines this one you can't do it you will need a set square or triangle to do that okay so when they are using this they have no need for any set squares or triangles okay set squares are also called triangles so the answer would be right here so if you want to use the um well drafters prefer to use the drafting machines because they won't need to use any triangles okay all right, so number 10, the first step in creating a traditional drawing is to 
and the first step would not be A or B draw a series of guidelines or set up a mighty line because you need the paper before you can draw anything so you need to learn how to eliminate um, different answers that won't make any sense because they ask you for the first step so if they give you a finished drawing the first step cannot be a finished drawing okay so the first thing that you want to do is line up your paper or align your paper so that it will be positioned square to the parallel bar and then you can uh, prepare everything and draw everything else okay so that would be the answer right here all right that's it thanks for watching um if you understood the questions um please leave a like if you do not understand the questions leave a comment if you have any other questions or multiple choice questions just ask me in the comment, se comment section and, uh, and i'll try and answer it as soon as possible um subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, hit the notifi notification bell if you would like to receive videos um updates as we go okay because i'll be doing um multiple videos on multiple choice okay multiple videos on multiple choice okay all right so thanks for watching and i will see you on the next one okay bye